One of the practices that's really helped me level up as a developer is the practice of diagramming or mapping out tasks before I even write a single line of code. Too often, especially if the task is relatively easy, we'll jump headfirst into writing code before we really even take a survey of what we actually need to do. And this leads to over-engineering, which is defined as the art of creating overly complex solutions for simple problems. You know what I mean. You read the task, the solution flashes in your head, and the location of the code in the code base comes to mind. You jump in and start typing away, and essentially, you make it up as you go. Well, stop doing that. There's a better way. And given that writing code is only a fraction of what you do as a developer, this applies really to most problem solving in general, whether it's creating a CI CD pipeline, spinning up new servers, tightening up security, or troubleshooting a bug. And we've all at some point in working with a tough problem said this phrase before, I don't know where to even begin. Well, let me tell you where to begin. First, and I've said this many times in the past, you can pseudocode the problem first. You can write down the steps in plain English, and then after doing so, translate that into code, if you're writing code. But even better than that, as I've alluded to already, is mapping out or creating a diagram or chart of what needs to be done step by step. This helps create a model or a framework that not only helps you work out a solution to a problem tangibly, but also helps you plan out each step before your code editor is even opened. And you probably know from my past videos, I've used draw IO for this, especially for AWS diagrams, and more importantly, for quickly mapping out my thoughts and processes. However, I kept seeing this one app pop up, especially on some crypto channels lately that I've been following, and it's called Miro. So I investigated, signed up, it's free, and it's packed with useful tools for this very purpose, which I'll show you in this video, including the ability to generate charts and diagrams from a simple AI prompt. And regarding draw.io, Miro actually has this built into it. So I could continue to use draw.io, or I could use a much more robust app that also includes it. And I've been using this now for a while and thus will be the tool of choice today for this video. And having used this tool for some time, I got in touch with Miro and they agreed to sponsor this video. So thank you. Now, before we get to some practical use cases and examples of diagramming, mind mapping, problem solving with code, etc., with Miro, which I know you're gonna love, let me jump into an extreme example first with a new feature they recently released to demonstrate how powerful an app like this can be. So we all know when we're working in the cloud, there's gonna be diagrams, all cloud projects I've worked on in the past have had extensive diagrams of how the environment is laid out from networking to VPCs to apps to workflows. Well, I was on a contract role a few years back and the team I was on was in charge of all things infrastructure in AWS. And we used a diagramming tool to document our infrastructure. And it was a lot of infrastructure. So every time a new piece was added, we'd write the CloudFormation template or we'd edit a CloudFormation template. We'd deploy it and then manually add it to our diagram. And we needed very badly at the time a tool that could just look at our environment and create a diagram of it automatically. Well, Miro, in addition to the use cases we're going to look at soon, has that AWS capability. So if you have a meeting and you need to generate a diagram of your AWS account to discuss, just demonstrate it here in Miro. Let me demonstrate. So let's create a new board. And over here on the left, click the plus, and you'll see under diagramming this option for AWS Cloud View. Let's click that. And I'm going to click add to add a new AWS account. And you have two options, cross account role and JSON file. We'll look at both of those, but let's choose cross account role first. And there's five steps. So first you need to create a cross account role in your AWS account and they make it really easy. Just click the link and they'll fill in all the information for you. So here's the account ID that they provided and then the external ID that they went ahead and filled in for us. And if you're worried about security, just go to the documentation on AWS CloudView and here at the bottom under these frequently asked questions, there's more explanation there of what's actually going on. So verify the fields and click on next. Let's do that. Then the next step is on the permission page, read only access policy with AWS managed job function pre-selected, click on next. So let's choose AWS managed job function, choose read only access, which again, they've already chosen for us. So Miro is just asking for read only access to our environment. Click next. And then it says on the review page, enter role name and click create role to proceed. So they already provided me with a role name. So click create role. And I can just do Miro. Click on my new role, grab the ARN. Paste the ARN here. And then grab the name of the role. Paste it here and that's it. Add and import. Once I do that, I'm gonna get a picture of my AWS environment. So here I'm gonna select that, choose next. 
I'm in US East 1, you can choose whatever you want here, and then visualize. Now watch this. And there we have it, it took about 10 seconds to visualize. So I have all of my Lambda functions, my S3 buckets, I have an internet gateway here that I probably need to get rid of. And then here's my main VPC with my availability zones, my ACLs for each one, and my internet gateway as well. And if you're wondering what all do they actually import, again on this documentation page, it's here in the frequently asked questions. So all of this is being imported. And by the way, this is in beta, so there's still more improvements to come. But so far, that was really easy to set up. Now there's another option, let me open up another board. There's another option to just import a JSON file. If you don't wanna set up a role for this, you can just export a JSON file, import it here, and it'll build that for you as well. Let's look at that. Click on AWS, click add, and go to JSON file. And here's the instructions. Install and sign into the AWS CLI, which you probably have already if you're using AWS. Select the relevant AWS profile in your terminal. Mine is just default. Install Node.js, which I already have, and then run the data import script. So this is an NPX package that Miro has created. So let me copy this, open up my terminal, and I'm just gonna run this command that they've given me. Select regions to scan. I just wanna scan US East 1. AWS profile is gonna be default. That's how I've set it up. Scan global resources, sure, go ahead. Output file path, JSON is good. And I'll set that to default. Compress the output file, no. And look at this, discover 13 resources. It runs all of these API calls to discover all the resources in your AWS account and then exports that to a JSON file. Now I can open this in VS Code to take a look at what they did. And basically it's just a long JSON file of resources. CloudTrail, my route table, internet gateway, and so forth. So I can take this now and I can import it into Miro. Import and visualize, just click this button. And again, there's my diagram. It's that easy, just imagine automating this. So every day, 8 a.m., we export a new JSON, and we always have the latest visualization of our AWS environment. Now, another tool for AWS they've just released that you can work with right inside of Miro is an AWS cost calculator. This is a cost calculator which, for AWS users, helps you estimate costs. So as you're planning your environment, you can use this tool to drag in the components you're looking to deploy, add data like region and storage type, and calculate the costs. Let me show you real quick. Click the plus, and under diagramming, you'll see AWS cost calculator, which is an app created and maintained by Miro. So click that. And you'll see here, select an AWS diagram or AWS shapes to calculate their cost. So I can go to diagramming, type in AWS to get all of the shapes and icons. And let's choose an RDS database and go back to AWS cost calculator. And let's define it. So one instance, database engine, database edition, none of that matters. I'll leave all this the same. Choose save service selection and calculate. And that calculates this RDS database at seven cents per hour or 53 bucks a month or 639 bucks a year. So you can imagine, put your VPC on here, add your EC2 instances, your databases, whatever you're looking to estimate, and Miro will estimate these cost calculations for you. Really love that they've added an AWS integration here. Okay, I just wanted to show you some powerful solutions upfront regarding Miro and AWS. But what about everyday tasks as a developer? Well, let me show you some more general ways I use this app to mind map, diagram, and organize my thoughts before any task, especially coding, but also in planning these YouTube videos and planning my week, my community events, etc. First, I use it to play Guess Who with other developers who are also feeling like doing nothing after lunch. Just kidding. Let's start with a simple idea. Sticky notes. These are just one-offs, very simple tasks that I just need to put in sequence. Let's say there's a bug in my own little hobby app where user sessions are expiring too early. I need to fix this and I need to write a test for it. So I have a template here for quick notes. If I go to Travis Media Templates, go to Team, I have this template. Click Use Template. And here I just put in what I need. So determine what the current session time is change it to 30 minutes and write a unit test to validate session expiration logic. Then let me delete this one. Very simple. I can even use real sticky notes or even a sheet of paper. Doesn't matter. But to me, it's super easy just to use this app. And this is helpful because I have three steps. I don't trust myself to remember these as I get into the nitty gritty of working the solution out. So I make notes and I can even draw arrows for each progression if needed. 
if I had more, you know, like 10 sticky notes. And I'll get to how I use the AI feature in a minute, but just check this out. I can click create with AI, make sure I'm on sticky notes, choose ideas, and then just say create sticky notes for these tasks in order. And I just paste it in, choose generate sticky notes, and there we have it. So I don't have to do it manually, I can use AI to do it for me, which is really helpful. But we'll get to that in a minute. Next, I use the Kanban board template that I've tweaked here. I have a template for this and it makes it super easy. Let's say I have a task in sprint planning to create an API endpoint to fetch a user's profile data by ID and to implement rate limiting to 100 requests per minute per IP. Okay, let's think about this. Let's create a new Kanban board based on, again, a template that I have. So I'm gonna go to Explore Templates, Travis Media Templates, Team, and Kanban Board. And this is my task to-dos Kanban. So I have my to-do column, my in progress, and my done. So I get my task and I have these specific requests. So number one, I need to figure out my endpoint. Second, I must return user details such as name, email, and creation date. Third, I need to implement error handling for invalid IDs. Fourth part is I need to implement rate limiting for public API endpoints. Next is set a maximum of 100 requests per minute per IP. And then finally, return a 429 too many requests status when the limit is exceeded. These are my to-dos on this sprint planning feature. So let's say I already know the endpoint, so I can move that here, open it up, add a description. Here's my endpoint is a get request at API user's ID. So save that, and then I can move it to done. And I'm just gonna work one by one. Next, I have some criteria that it must return. So must return user details of name, email, and creation date. Let's focus on this task today. So I'm gonna move it to in progress. I'm gonna work on that until I'm done. I'll move it to done, and I'll move on to the next part of that feature. And that's how I work through my tasks personally and locally this sprint. Third, because the school platform doesn't have code blocks, in my community, we use Miro to show off code solutions. Specifically, we have a board now that we share our solutions to the advent of code challenges. Here, we can share code blocks, leave notes, open a chat dialogue, and many other different things. And we can do so because Miro is a collaborative platform. It can be real-time, async. I can host a live workshop because it's designed to allow easy collaboration between members of a team. Now you may be like, Travis, there's so many apps out there that do all of this. Well, two things. Number one, don't underestimate the power of simplicity. A simple pen and paper greatly outweighs your multitasked out self any day. And a Kanban board in whatever app you use is a great way to move through many tasks that make up a whole. Second, there are hundreds of templates here, many of which are interactive and intelligent and cover any occasion or role you can think of. And if you have no idea where to start, there's an AI feature that can help you get going with a simple prompt, getting you from ideation to execution, even when it comes to solving complex problems much faster. Let's say you're learning Git, or better yet, teaching Git, and you wanna create a flowchart to explain the steps in creating a new branch, doing some work, and then merging it back into main. I can open up the Create with AI prompt here. I can choose Diagram and Flowchart, and I can paste in this. Git workflow from pulling latest changes from main, checking out a new branch called feature one, merging the main branch into feature one, and then merging feature one into the main branch. Let's generate that diagram. And look at this, I have this ready to go now in my presentation. And it even added the whole conflicts part. I didn't even tell it, but it knows that when you're merging main into feature one, you're gonna have to resolve some conflicts before you merge that back into main. Or say I have to give a talk next Thursday to my dev team on the topic of best security practices around interacting with databases. Let's switch to mind map. So here's mind map and try that out. Here I'm gonna say, I need to give a presentation to my dev team about best security practices when writing code that interacts with databases. Give me five key topics to touch on with some mappings for each one to think about. So let's make some room and generate this diagram. Again, we're gonna choose mind map and generate diagram. And there we have it, we have a mind map. So best security practices for database interaction, we have input validation, authentication and authorization, error handling and logging, parameterized queries and data encryption, and then all of these subtopics within that. And I can always add to it, like if I wanna add something else to this, I can do so. But AI gives me that starting point that saves me so much time. Now let's try one more, let's choose UML sequence and then try this out. Diagram for me how OIDC works. Say I gotta give a talk on that. Generate diagram. And here we have it. Say I already know how OIDC works. 
I'm the OIDC guy at work, but I don't want to do this from scratch. So this gives me again, a starting point for my presentation. Okay, what about simple diagramming shapes? Well, there's many out the box. Here's all my AWS components, Azure, Kubernetes, and many more. Need a wireframe and all the components for that? Just choose the plus and under diagramming, you have a wireframe library. And by the way, this plus arrow gives you access to all the tools, media, and integrations. You can see all the many options here from charts to polls to chats. There's also a marketplace. Are you in a meeting? We'll choose notes and meeting agenda. When you're done, export it to a PDF. There are loads of options here. You need a Kubernetes mapping tool, Azure data flow, need to allow your team access and all collaborate in real time. And there are many templates to start you off with. Just go to explore templates and there's presentations, flowcharts, DevOps roadmaps, smart goals, app wireframes, and hundreds more. There's even a directory of solutions called Miroverse to see and use boards that others have created like icebreakers and games, diagramming, and more. So I think you'll find great value in an app like this. If you wanna try it out, just head over to Miro.com and enter your email to get started for free. So my point here is there's a million tools you could use out there. Pen and paper, VS Code, Notepad, or a tool that does it all like Miro. For me, I want a tool that can do it all. A tool that I can use to map out ideas and steps needed to solve problems, whether I use all the features or just a few. And this has been my go-to for a while now. For you, it may be different whatever works. But if you're quick to code without planning or you're struggling with finding solid solutions to problems you're given, then take time to diagram and map out your solutions in plain English or in a flowchart, sticky notes, whatever, first. And I think by spending time up front to do this, you'll progress faster, you'll code clearer, cleaner, and you'll overall do more meaningful work in your career. What do you think? What tools are you using or what practices do you incorporate to problem solve as a developer? Let's discuss it below down in the comments. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, consider doing so, and I'll see you in the next video.